Hello everybody, my name is Erica and welcome back. This is video number two in a series of three videos that I put together for you on canine conditioning. In that first video, just a quick reminder, uh, and if you haven't watched it, just click above. The video link is available for you. You can watch it right now. In that first video, I talked about developing that critical eye, that sixth sense, and ways that you can start to notice very subtle signs of imbalance and potential weakness in your dog. In the second video, I'm talking about strength training and more specifically developing core strength in your dog which is so important for preventing injuries down the road and in the third video i'm talking about the components of a balanced conditioning program what are they how to get started and more specifically i'm going to talk about endurance training and i'm going to give some examples of things that i do with my own dog with interval training and I want to reiterate the importance and significance of canine conditioning. This is something important for all dogs. All of our dogs are canine athletes, but more specifically, if we're doing strenuous activities, um, if we have a really active pet, if we're engaged in sport and competition and, and work with our dogs, uh, such as uh, doing police work, uh, search and rescue, it's so important to keep our dogs fit to keep them healthy and ensure that they're in top-notch condition to prevent further injury down the road. So this really can apply to all dogs at all age levels. And it's also something to think about that if you can just prevent one injury, that right there by having knowledge of things that you can do ahead of time to keep your dog healthy, to keep your dog strong, by preventing one injury, you're looking at saving thousands, potentially thousands of dollars in medical bills. You're talking about potentially saving the future working career of your dog. And you're looking at the possibility of not having to retire your dog due to an injury and having a very long and fruitful sport career. So this is a very, very important topic that I think everybody should be thinking about, uh, regardless of what activity they do with their dogs and regardless of the age of their dog or the breed. So now let's take a look at what I did with Bachi to make him stronger, to get him healthier, and to really develop those core muscles, to develop core strength so that I can get him all the way through and have him fully recovered so that we can continue training in our sport, Frenching, and return to competition. I'd like to start with a quote here from Zink. Zink states that many owners or handlers spend the majority, if not all, their training time practicing the skills of their chosen sports with their dogs, but many do not have a comprehensive training program that makes time for targeted strength, endurance, balance, body awareness, and flexibility training. We need to have a long-term plan that incorporates all of these components. And I, I just really want to reiterate how important this is because um, I'm, I'm definitely guilty of one where I was focusing a lot on preparing for my, my trial that was coming up. I was doing lots of training related to competition. Um, and prior to my dog's injury, I, I really hadn't thought about what that full balance program would look like. So extremely important. So I want to talk a little bit about my own dog, Bachi. I'd mentioned he had had a pulled uh, iliopsoas muscle. It's a, a groin muscle he had had pulled. It took me uh, like nine months to get it diagnosed. Once I finally got it diagnosed by a canine physical therapist, we went through six weeks of complete rest. We went through months of physical therapy. And I just want to talk a little bit about uh, what, what I did to help get him back into condition and, and back to where he could compete again and, and handle the, the challenge, uh, the physical challenge of the sport of French ring. So one of the things, once he became physically able and he got stronger and we had lots of, lots of massage, we did along the way, um, cold laser therapy, um, underwater treadmill, but we started to also develop this, these core muscles, uh, for developing strength. So some strength training. Now he's a very long dog, very long in the waist, um, we think that possibly it started out with a weakness in the lower back that eventually led to the, the iliopsoas muscles, um, pulled iliopsoas muscles. So for him and his body structure, it was really important that we start to develop uh, more muscles and strengthen the lower back and these core uh, abdominal muscles also. So here we see him on an exercise physio ball, a peanut. 
Um, he's balancing on it, so he's having to use those core muscles to maintain balance. If, if this was live, you would see how he's kind of, the, the muscles are quivering as he's holding position. And it's just as important when they're on the equipment as when they're off the equi equipment to maintain good balance. So here we see an example of a nice straight back. You look at going from his neck all the way down to his tail, nice and straight and well balanced. If your dog cannot maintain good balance when they're using the equipment, then you've pushed your dog too far um, and, and you need to lessen the, the degree of difficulty. So here, if he can't maintain good balance and good form whenever he's on the ball, on the peanut, then I would want to move him back to a more stable surface. So anytime you start to change the surface and make it more unstable and make it harder for your dog to balance, you're, you're making the degree of difficulty of the exercise, it, it, it's more of a challenge for them. Uh, so again, I just really want to reiterate, when we look at your dog being well balanced when they're moving on the ground, when they're walking and they're trotting and they're cantering and running, when they're doing these exercises, it's really important to train your eye to watch for good balance while they're on the equipment. So um, the, the peanut, the physio ball, and also this blue disc that you see on the ground in the photo, these are things that I would use to help to develop core strength. Now, Strength training, the most common form of strength training, according to Zink, is resistance training where the dog's muscular effort is performed against an opposing force. Resistance exercises are used to develop the strength and size of skeletal muscles. Now, uh, we can have resistance training where we have some kind of exterior force uh, on the dog, like I'm thinking of uh, friends of mine that are getting involved in weight pulling. Um, but you can also use your dog's own body weight and gravity to build resistance as they're doing exercises. And also properly performed resistance training can provide significant functional benefits and improvement in overall health and well-being. So because of my dog's structure, his size, um, it was really important that we start to build strength training into his condition, conditioning program and that it extend beyond once he was recovered from his injury. It was really important that we maintain this throughout his active life while he even if he's not competing because um, because of his structure this was one of his weak points we needed to keep that that back muscles the lower back and the abdominal area nice tight muscles um, so this is something that that is just one of the the various components to be considering when you're designing a balanced conditioning program for your dog so here we see I did get back to training. Uh, it took many, many, many months to get them to, to the level to where we can compete at a high level uh, of French ring training. Um, so here we did get them back into training. And then here we actually have a picture of me competing in French ring uh, level two. And we have a hurdle, a broad jump. Um, jumping actually puts extra strain on the, the psoas and iliopsoas muscles. So it was really important that we had this um, healed and recovered and that he was nice and strong in order to handle the demands of the sport. Um, we ended up competing and we in French ring level three is the highest level. Um, we competed successfully at level two uh, to have a qualifying score. We had to compete under two different judges. We had our qualifying scores for ring two uh, and he did very well. And this was this was after he had had the injury. So um, it you know, it, it, it pays off and, and, and it works. Um, getting your dog healthy again, you, you can succeed depending on the type of injury. But the, the main thing I want to reiterate here is that, you know, the idea is that you start to develop a conditioning program. You do these things before your dog is injured so that hopefully the whole reason I'm making these videos and doing my articles is to educate you to hope, hope that people don't have to go through what I went through to, to realize the significance and the importance of this. That it doesn't take an injury for you to realize, oh, I should have been doing some strength training. Oh, I should have had st uh, stretching involved in my program. Oh, I only did aerobic exercises. I didn't do other types of exercises. Um, so these are things to, to, to consider and, and things that I wanted to share with you. So a quick reminder that this is the second video in a series of three videos that I put together for you on canine conditioning. Stay tuned. Video three is coming up very soon. And in that video, I'm talking about the components of a balanced conditioning program. More specifically, I'm going to talk about some of the things that I do to develop endurance in my own dogs. And I'm going to focus particularly on interval training. So please leave a comment below. I would love to hear your experiences and to learn about the types of things that you're doing to develop that critical eye and that sixth sense and the things that you're doing with your dogs to make them stronger.